So let us praise Jesus now, for we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Glory to God. Come on, sing it. We are standing. We are standing. Come on and worship Him with me, church. On holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So let us pray. Jesus now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Come on, sing it to the King. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Glory to God. So let us praise Jesus now. For we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. We pray that the Holy Ghost would take the word of God and minister it to them. Encourage your people. Strengthen your people. Lift them, those who are beaten down and downtrodden and discouraged, feel hopeless because of whatever problems they're dealing with. Father God, we pray that you would visit them. We pray that you would visit them. You made us a promise that you will never leave us, nor forsake us, but you'll be with us even unto the end of this world. Minister to your people this morning through the scriptures. In the name of Jesus, somebody say amen. Glory to God. Listen, on this morning, as we continue our series, you will make a comeback. On this morning, we want to talk to you about Jesus cares about you. Can someone make it personal and say, Jesus cares about me? Say it like you mean it. Jesus cares about me. Glory to God. Can you type below this video, Jesus cares about me? What a mighty God we serve. He really does care about you. He cares about everything you are going through. He cares about your pain. He cares about your divorce. He cares about your financial situation. He cares about your health. He cares about your future. He cares about death in your family, grief, agony. He cares about your court case. He cares about betrayal among your friends. Jesus cares about every single detail of your lives. Your pain, your agony, your frustrations. He really does care. And we're about to look into the lives of two men, two of Jesus' disciples who were heartbroken after Jesus had been crucified. It was now the third day. They didn't realize he had resurrected exactly as he had promised. But two of his disciples, I'm not talking about among the 12. These are other disciples he had. 
But these men, they were heartbroken. They were distraught. They were crushed. They felt hopeless. They didn't know what to do. They do, didn't know how to handle it all. Stomach what had happened to Jesus. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 34, that same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. They were talking about Jesus. They were talking about how he was crucified. And the Bible says, as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself, glory to God, a visitation. Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. Now, later on in the book of Acts, the apostle Peter, preaching about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, the apostle Peter said, Jesus appeared to witnesses chosen before by God for him to appear to them. So apparently, these two men as well, they were chosen by God that Jesus should appear to them and give them a visitation. Lord have mercy. That'll preach right there. Watch this. So Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. And you know what blows my mind with this? With, this is the resurrected Christ now. He had defeated Satan. He had taken the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He had already declared all powers given to me in heaven and on earth. All power had been given to him. And as powerful as he was, he cared about the agony. He cared about the grief. He cared about the distress. He cared about what was disturbing and bothering his disciples. Listen to me, good friend. Whatever is bothering you and weighing you down, Jesus cares about you. The Bible says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He cares about you. Another scripture says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. Simply means whenever you are dealing with something, he feels your agony, he feels your grief, he feels your pain. Lord, have mercy. So Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them because he cared about them. He wanted to encourage them. He wanted to lift their spirits. But God kept them from recognizing him. Have you ever had him show up in a way that you least expect? Have you ever had God show up in a way that shocked the daylights out of you? Come on, somebody. Have God ever worked on your behalf in a way that you couldn't believe it? You were just flabbergasted. You were just blown away. Come on, type below. Type in the comments and let me know. Have God ever blown your mind? You know, the Bible says he is able, Ephesians 3.20, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. He asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stop short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. What things, Jesus asked, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. They are so, they are so taken up in his tragic death that they could not get over what I mean who I mean who this is just three days. Who 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 can get over something that quick? There ain't no there ain't a human being on this earth who can get over something that quick. I, when when I lost my parents, I mean Lord have mercy. It, you you it, you you almost never get over it. I mean you learn to live with it and you move on and you heal. But it's it's not a three day event. Come on. So this was fresh on these guys' mind. And yet he showed up to minister to them and encourage them. 
I believe the Holy Ghost through this broadcast is showing up to minister to somebody. The Lord Jesus is using this broadcast to bring encouragement and healing and closure to some things in your life. Watch this. They said, we had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. <laughs> then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone just as the women had said. Praise God. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the master would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses. He took him into the word. He took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining from all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You talk about a divine visitation from God. The word he's, I mean, he's opening and explaining the scriptures. The word is explaining the word. You, it can't get no clearer than that. By this time, they were nearing a mess and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they begged him. They, they just, you know, God hid it from them, but they just, it was something about him they couldn't resist. Come on, somebody. They begged him, stay the night with us since it is getting late. So he went home with them. That's the kind of God I serve. He said, if you obey, if you love me, you'll obey my words. And me and my father will come and we'll manifest ourselves. And then he said, we'll make our home with you. Wow, Lord have mercy. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Only, I mean, they knew only Jesus did this with them. Suddenly, glory to God, suddenly their eyes were open and they recognized him. At that moment, whew, he disappeared. He vanished out of their sight. Glory to God. He visited them. He cared about them. Why did he show up? Because he cared about their pain. He cared about their agony. He cared about their grief. He cares about you. The Bible says, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found their 11 dis disciples and the others who had gathered with them who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. They were encouraged. Their burdens were lifted. They were back. They bunks back from that depression. They bunks back from the sadness. They bunks back from the grief because they saw Jesus. If you ever see Jesus, you will never be the same. He changed my life January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning, 1993. I surrendered my life to him and my life hadn't been the same ever since. He loves you so much. He cares about you. Come on, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you. Those who are burdened down with the cares of this life, with their troubles, their tribulations, their trials, their heartaches and their pains. Lord, you said in Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Father God, we honor you this morning. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Thank you for touching your people. Thank you for answering their prayer. Thank you for giving them the strength to go on. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Master. Thank you for showing us that you care about every detail of our lives. Thank you for mending together the brokenhearted. Thank you for lifting burdens from off their shoulders. Thank you, God, for picking them up and giving them their faith back, their hope back, their courage back. Thank you for bringing healing, not only physical healing, but in their mind, in their will, in their emotions, in their hearts, God. The wounds, the inner wounds, rejection, betrayal, divorce. So much things are before us this morning. But we lift your wonderful people up before you. Touch every single one of them. Don't allow a single person to go untouched this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit them into your hands. Amen. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Amen. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you, we appreciate you, and we'll never take you for granted. God bless.